Welcome to the Everyday Ministry Podcast, where ministers get together to discuss everyday ministry. This is James. I'm sitting here with Daniel Woodcock. Um, Daniel, if you don't mind, just start off by just introducing yourself. Hey, I'm excited to be on, man. Appreciate you uh, having me be a part today. Uh, I am uh, Dan Woodcock. I'm the lead pastor of Cornerstone Church. We're in downtown Gadsden, Alabama. Gadsden, Alabama. How did you end up there? <laughs> I think when you end up in a place like Gadsden, that's like definitely got to be a God thing. We're an hour east of Birmingham, and uh, basically a mutual friend had connected me to a, a, a different church in town where I came in as a student pastor, and that's actually been uh, six years ago now. So I've been in the area for six years, so kind of crazy. Well, Gatson's a little bigger than Vernon, Alabama, by a little bigger. <laughs> I mean, a good bit bigger, so I know what you mean. Um, but we're going to really talk about Dan's um, just ministry experience right now, what he's been going through, as he's going to explain in a little bit. His isn't a church plant necessarily, but it's not a revitalization. It's almost a combination of the two. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But before we get into any of that, if you don't mind, would you just define an everyday minister? Uh, I would say an everyday minister is someone who's just willing and ready at a moment's notice to just do the work that God's called us to. So, you know, one of the good things about being a, a church planner is every day is a new day. It's different. We like to have routines. I like to have my routines the things that I do and I plan for stuff. But especially because we're in downtown location, we have people that come to our church all the time seeking assistance. They need food. They're hurting. They want to pray with someone. And so I think that everyday minister is just someone who says, you know, Lord, I have a plan. Uh, of things that I'd like to accomplish today. But if uh, something comes up and it's an opportunity, uh, man, I want to be willing and ready to be used for whatever you you ask me to do, whatever may come up today. So I'm always conscious if I go to the store, if I'm filling up my gas tank for those opportunities where I may get to interact with someone and, and I always try to use it in a way to, you know, whether I'm inviting them to church or just talking to them about their own life, just be ready to to, to minister to that person. I love your answer. I think a lot of times when I ask this question, we naturally assume pastor or minister in the sense of paid. Uh, then a lot of times people think of the bivocational minister. But I think the difference is a full-time pastor has to be an everyday minister as well. But they have to be more intentional about it. You know, they have to make time of their day to go out into places where they're going to interact with people. Because there is people that may stop by, but in reality, the lost people most of the time aren't going to stop by on a regular basis. So I know you kind of introduced a little bit how you ended up in Gaston, but uh, just tell us about your church, uh, just kind of the demographics of it, with the size of it, and kind of the story behind how you've got to the point you are at your church. Yeah, uh, Cornerstone, we just celebrated our second birthday uh, this year in February. And so we're going on our third year uh, as a church here in downtown Gadsden. Uh, we average uh, right around 2, 225 every Sunday in terms of weekly attendance. But the demographic of people we reach, probably about 80% of them come from an unchurched background. And so we probably see in a four to six week period, we probably have around 350 different people that will actually come to our church consistently, or they would call Cornerstone home. Cornerstone started really for us, we were on a journey to be church planners. We're approved through North American Mission Board to be church planners. As you can tell, I'm not from Alabama. My accent definitely gives that away or lack thereof. And so we were, we were my wife and I, uh, born and bred from Mobile, Alabama. We thought we were going to go out west to Denver to plant a church. I was on staff there at a church, and we just felt really strongly that God was going to lead us that direction. And a long story short, just like doors never opened up for us. We'd gone through lots of things in the training. We were ready to go. We were trying to raise support. Uh, but just like the doors were never open for us to move to Denver. So you fast forward the story a little bit. We were on staff at a church. Um, I was just doing college ministry for them. You know, just thinking, well, maybe this is it. You know, I mean, here I am. I'm still in Gadsden, and maybe this is what God wants for me. And uh, long story short, on graduation Sunday in 2014, the church splits. 
the pastor splits the church and a church that ran about 250 overnight became a church of about 65. Wow. And we were there kind of stuck in the middle, like, okay, we had nothing to do with anything. What do we do? Uh, we didn't like, we didn't feel like we needed to leave, but at the same time, we felt like we just needed to help the people that were left. And so I just stayed and I just started, you know, preaching for them. They asked me to preach. The average age was 65. Uh, I'm, I was 30 years old at the time. And so here I am half their age. And it was just honestly just a dead situation. And, uh, through all that, um, Cornerstone was born. How was it transitioning between the ages for you? It wasn't bad. You know, I think they, they understood, you know, when I started telling the church, the only way I know how to help you is if we start all over. And so I, you know, I said, I'm a, I'm a church planner. That's the only thing that I know how to do is just to start something from scratch. And I think we can do this. I said, but you have to be willing to give up preferences. And I think they looked to us as, you know, they didn't look down on me because of age. They honestly looked to me as someone who had the knowledge and said, hey, you've gone through this training. You've done this stuff. And if we're going to do it, you know, we don't know how to do it. And so that it was honestly, it was a great balance of back and forth of, hey, I want to lean on you for your wisdom. Uh, here, I'm 30. I have, at the time I had two kids. I'm like, and I, I need godly people in my life. At the same time, they were looking to me for the energy and the insight and direction. And so it was really a beautiful thing of just us coming together to make this happen. Was the transition between that Sunday and restarting as a church, was it a long transition or was it fairly quick? Or So one thing that I don't know if this is a term out there, it's something that um, I kind of coined for myself. So I like to think I made it up. I may not have. I may have heard this somewhere, but I call it the desperation factor. And so if the desperation factor is high, you can do a lot more than if the desperation factor is low. So I get to coach uh, several churches and pastors of, of guys who are trying to transition churches. And, and usually their desperation factor is low. So they've got to make their changes gradually. Uh, I was in a high desperation factor. So when we went through, you know, that, that May Sunday, uh, honestly, there was a Sunday in July. There were 66 people. The church was dead. And I just had one of those real moments with God, like, you need to give me direction. What am I doing here? What is this church doing here? They want a search committee. I, I, I don't know what they're, I'm not what they want. Like, this is, you're going to have to do something here so amazing, or you need to send me somewhere else, but that's what you got to do. Jesus name, amen. You know, and God really just, just showed me Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. And it was like, God was telling me, love the church because I love the church and I want to do something special here. So through that, I started telling him, Hey, you know, y'all I'm, I'm a church planner and we're in downtown Gadsden. It's a very diverse area of our city. We um, are 50, 50 when it comes to percentages of African American to the white population, rising Hispanic. Uh, we got all demographics, low income, middle income, high, uh, high income. People live in different types of homes. I said, our church needs to be a reflection of that. And so from there, uh, it was August, we started pursuing, and that's when we, we named the church to Cornerstone. And then it was in February that we officially launched, February 2015. And so today, we see that reflection in our church. We're still predominantly uh, a white church, but we have um, a high percentage of those are minorities, whether Hispanic, uh, African-American, and then, like I said, 80% of our church come from an unchurched background. So I met you, it wasn't too long after y'all launched the church then, because I met you, it was early summer of 2015. Yeah, yeah, we were in our first year. I didn't realize that. You're talking about the desperation factor. Where I'm at, we definitely didn't go through the the replanting, the reestablishing stage like you did. Um, but my church, I, I came into a church plant that was the pastor was there for about four years and he left after the fourth year and I came in and it was, it was in a bad spot really. And so we're at a point right before I, I got some help through the church planning in Alabama, right before then we're at a point where we're talking about closing the doors down. And then you're talking about that desperation factor, man, it just hit right there. And then after that, it's got a lot better, man. Uh, 
definitely not running the numbers you're running, but hey, I, I'm content with what we have and excited about it. So one thing you mentioned in you just explaining all that it says that you you help coach a lot of people that are making this transition. Do you yeah. do that just as a your personal thing, or you're a part of a organization that does that, or what? I think it's something that's kind of just happened naturally. Uh, I have been connected with uh, Alabama, you know, State Board of Missions, Al's bomb and uh, guy Lamar Duke has used me for a lot of just different, you know, trainings. And so I've kind of uh, really um, partnered with and just teamed up with his son, Tommy Duke, who does a lot of our state trainings. And, and so from that, you know, something I've always been passionate about is just to help churches. And so as there's been churches that have close by, I've started doing uh, a lot of the assessments. Uh, I'm helping reshape the assessment process for Alabama for church planners that want to come to the state because we want we want to produce some high quality leaders and churches. So I've just kind of naturally been drawn to some of these things. And then I, I get connected with churches and uh, they'll ask me questions because I, I'm 33 now, because I am a millennial myself. They ask me those questions of, hey, you know, how do you reach millennials? And I think a lot of times the stipulation comes with, oh, well, your church must be just a really young church. And it's true. We have a lot of young families. You know, from that first year we started, we had three kids in the uh, in the nursery. Two of them were mine, and now we have four nurseries. And so we have a lot of young families that come to our church, but we also reach people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s that they come to our church. And so uh, I'm able to just take our experiences and share that with other churches and say, hey, listen, if you, you can do that, but in my experience, these are the things that I think will happen. And so, um, you know, it's just an honor to – be able to help people out as best I can. I always say like, I don't know everything, but what I know I want to help you with. Awesome. Um, that's actually how we met. I, I met Daniel at the church planning network uh, that we do have here in Alabama. Encouraged by what we're doing in the state. And we'll probably talk about that in a minute. But as we just talking about just the process you went through, um, I, I know there were some difficulties in making the transition, even though that, that desperation factor was there. I know there was difficulties. Because uh, when you're dealing with broken, fallen people, there's going to be that, right? Uh, sure. But today, after all of the process you've been through, what is one of the biggest issues you have right now? I think for us, it's um, our location hinders a lot of what we do. We're we're completely landlocked in the sense where because we're downtown, you know, you have all the we're surrounded by other whether it's churches or buildings, uh, businesses. There's just no room for us to physically expand our parking. And so, you know, they say that uh, for every one acre of paved parking, you can have about 200 people. And that's exactly where we're stuck at. So for us, it's how do we go around um, getting more people to park? How do we look through those obstacles? One thing we're actually looking to do is uh, test run some two, two services uh, we saw this past year for Easter, was, we had a record attendance for us. I think we had, it was over 300. It was the first time we hit over 300 in two services. Oh, wow. So, um, you know, we know those things are possible, but it's doing it in a way where, you know, we have a lot of cycle through. So, you know, we're a church of 350, but 200, 225 show up every week. So how can we get that consistency? So that's one of the things for us when you're dealing with unchurched people, Hey, if they show up once a month, they're doing really good. And so, you know, that's kind of things that we, we fight with. Because your growth has been pretty quick and it's mainly unchurched, like you said. So do y'all have an issue with leadership within the church or did that group you have before step it up and really became that? So, you know, we've been really blessed with, uh, you know, our older people. Uh, one, we didn't have to teach them to, to give. And I think that's one of those things. You know, we had some very tight months there at the beginning, for sure. But you know, they understood those biblical, the biblical process of tithing, and so we've never had to worry about about that at the beginning. And we did have leaders there. You know, we did have leaders that stepped up, especially in our pivotal areas. You know, one thing that we said tell our people every single week is, it doesn't matter if you show up today, you can start serving next Sunday. We want you to be a part because 
we believe that uh, that discipleship aspect, while I'm for a one-on-one -on -one discipleship, for someone who's just coming back to church, if they can serve, whether they're greeting, they're passing out like a worship guide or, you know, whatever the case might be, even if we can do doing something simple, if we can change the way they think about church, there's more buy-in. Mm -hmm. And so as we've done this process, we've been able to see more people and we've been able to see people grow in their walk. And then naturally you're going to attract people who are more solid in their faith. And so, you know, now we have a, you know, a full deacon body, we have elders and we have leadership. And it's like, when I look back and even talking to you now, I just go, only God can do this, right? Because I'm not smart enough to make this stuff happen. Like only God can bring the people that you need. And, and I think that's what he does to the church. He says, I'm going to build the church. You just be faithful to do the work. And then he, he supplies the people. So it's been really, really cool to see that happen. Man, that's awesome. I, I'm excited to see, because uh, like I said, when I first met you, you were telling stories about where it was, but it's been two years since we've really talked about it. And yeah. so it's exciting to hear exactly what's happened in the last two years. Um, so in this whole process that you've been through in the church plant revitalization, uh, however you want to word that, what has been one of the greatest blessings that's come out of it for you as a pastor? Oh man, you know, I think, I think it, to me, it's just God's faithfulness. You know, sometimes like when, when you started, cause like I tell people like, I wasn't like looking for this. When I started helping the church, I even told them, I said, I, I, I started doing the, uh, really the, the replanting or the, or the planting process, if you will. And I was just the interim pastor. As a matter of fact, the church didn't call me to be the lead pastor until one month before we launched. <laughs> because I said, my heart is, my heart is for this church. So my heart is not to be the pastor. My heart is to see you reach the people in your community. And through that, it naturally became like, Hey, this guy needs to be leaving our church. Um, and so for me, as I look back, I just see God's faithfulness. I go, you know, what God has put in my heart for the type of church that I've always wanted to pastor. And I look today and I go, this is exactly the kind of church that I get to pastor today in the city that I love uh, in a way that I never thought was going to happen. I thought I was going to be somewhere else. I just go back and go, man, God is so faithful. You know, sometimes what, when he puts something in our hearts, we think it's going to look some, a, a certain way, but actually getting to walk through it, I'm so glad it, it's the way it is because I know I would have screwed it up. <laughs> yeah. Man, ain't that true. Uh, and all of us, not just you. Um, well, I got two more questions and then we'll get into the plug of the week and um, then you can tell everybody how to contact you and get up with you if they have any questions for you. Um, but the two questions I have is kind of a same question, just on the flip side of the coin, is if you could say one thing to that person that um, is considering church planning, what would it be? And then also after you answer that, if you could say one thing to those that question church planning, what would you say to them? For the person that is going to plant, uh, I think what I would just tell them is just hang on. It is everything that you hear about how, how tough it is. It's exactly true. Um, the, the trials you'll face in your own family, you're going to find the struggle between balancing your church, balancing your family, balancing, spending time with your wife, spending time with your children. Um, am I spending too much time with the church? Uh, you're going to have, you're going to fight with your own self. You're going to doubt your abilities. You're going to wonder why did God call me to this? You're going to have those moments where you live on the highs and the lows. Um, and it's every bit as, as an emotional roller coaster as you can think it is, but it, the journey is worth it. And so if you keep your eyes on Christ, if you know you're doing what he's called you to do, keep pressing forward, press on. We're called to fight as soldiers, right? To stand firm in our faith and to advance the gospel. And so just hang on. It is going to be crazy, but you get to look back and go, I was a part of something powerful because I was faithful to what God called me to do. <clears throat> so I think I would tell a person that they were going to plant. person that's questioning planting, uh, I would say get around some people um, who are doing it. Not necessarily like even your, maybe if you're already in a church, you know, you have the ability, hey, let me, let me go check out some places that are doing it. 
let me spend some time with guys who are planting or, you know, you might have friends who are going through the process right now that you can say, Hey, where are you going through? What are the things you're thinking of? Hey, how do you know you want to be at this place and this time? Uh, like I said, for me, I thought we were going to go uh, out West. I thought I would be in Denver now and planting a church in Denver and had a name picked out and all that stuff. And now here I am still in Gadsden and you have no idea what God's going to do. And so if there's that thing that's in your heart that you've kind of pushed away and you can't get rid of it, I would really dive into that because I believe God is going to set you on a journey. Really great. I, I love this part. I just, I just saw the movie Wonder Woman, all right? And I think it's so hey, powerful. Hey, I haven't seen it yet, so you can't give too I much away. Give, I won't give any plots away, but there's a powerful scene where her mom is talking to – uh, Princess Diana, and she's trying to leave, and, and she wants her to stay. She says, who will you be if you go? And Princess Diana says to her mom, who will I be if I stay? And I think that's really powerful because it's like if God's calling you to do something, you may have a really comfortable situation, and you may have a very successful ministry, but who will you be if you stay? And the flip side of that is who might you become if you go? And so... Uh, you know, it's a lot of prayer and discernment for sure. Awesome. Uh, just curious if you feel like answering, what was going to be the name of the church in Denver? Uh, we're actually going to call the church Heights Church. Uh, you get a lot of mountains and things out there. We even had like a logo and all this stuff. And that was kind of pressing through all the different thoughts. I and mean, a lot of those things that I was going to implement out West, I've actually, we've implemented here, tweak some things up a little bit per culturally, uh, and so, yeah, kind of crazy. Well, man, I've enjoyed the conversation. Uh, might have to get you back on here again later on and talk some more because uh, I feel like we could talk for another hour. Um, but before we get out of here, uh, do you have any recommendations, a plug of the week that you would recommend to maybe somebody that is a church planner or just for somebody for leadership in the church in general? <clears throat> I think for me, some of my go-tos um, – I love the Andy Stanley podcast. I love the Craig Rochelle podcast. And if, uh, they do those once a month, and it's a great leadership tidbit. They're short, 20, 30 minutes. And so for a guy like myself who's always on the go and busy, they're easy to listen to. Obviously, I'm going to plug you, man, the Everyday Ministry podcast. That's always a clutch one to have in your, in your repertoire. And if you want something really consistently every single week, Carrie Newhoff's leadership podcast is incredible. Awesome. Any uh – um I know I asked you this earlier, but I'm put you on spot. Uh, any books you might recommend? Uh, you know, I kind of go through my my just reading catalog of, of things that that I go through myself, and uh, I'll tell you a book um, that was really good. I just was really powerful. It was through the eyes of a lion, Levi Lusco. Um, it's just an incredible. It talks about the tragedy and the loss of his daughter. Uh, is really good. Um, and then how's your soul? Um, golly, that if I look for the book, I'll find it. Who's the guy out there in Seattle? Uh, it's his book. It's really good. I'll, uh, Judah Smith. Yeah. Um, how's your soul by Judah Smith. That's, that was powerful too. Awesome. Um, one recommendation I have is maybe, um, uh, you're in Alabama and you're considering planting, uh, we both threw his name out there a couple of times, um, but check out Lamar Duke. He's one that could help you uh, start the process and encourage you. And uh, also just make sure you that's what you're called to do. He's, he's an awesome man at that. My other resource I want to recommend is something that I uh, noticed a few weeks ago after the uh, South Southern Baptist Convention. It's a website. It's called uh, churchplanners.com, uh, and it's just a website that provides you with a list of church planners in each of the states throughout the United States. Uh, maybe you're listening and you're not from Alabama. You're from a different area. You can find your your state, and you can begin to pray for those. I remember one thing. Uh, I remember a lot of things, but one thing specifically I remember um, when I went through the church planning when network in Alabama is that before you even get started, they recommend that you have a hundred people praying for you. Um, and the reason why that is, is prayer is so important, not only in the life of uh, just any church or an individual, but especially in a church plant. So go to that website, look it up, find a, find some churches, 
uh, and just pray for them. I don't know how you want to do that. You might want to do it every day. Uh, lead your church in praying for them. Uh, and then also maybe you're in an established church and you're at a point where you could help a church that is uh, planning or starting the process to plant and just uh, maybe support them financially uh, and help them in as many ways as you can. Um, but Daniel, man, I've enjoyed it. I've been a great podcast, great conversation. Um, do you got anything you want to add before we get off of here? No, if people would love to connect, I'd love to just talk to guys who are maybe praying about or going through church planning, or maybe there's a guy out there saying, Hey, I want some help. Um, you know, for our church, maybe take some, some practical steps of things that we can do to make our church better. I'd love to be able to help out. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. My name, Daniel Woodcock. Um, I'm the only Asian Daniel Woodcock out there, <laughs> or you can find me on, uh, Instagram or Twitter at Dan Woodcock, the number one at Dan Woodcock one. Awesome, man. Y'all, y'all reach out to him. He's been a great, uh, encouragement to me in my process and he would be that for you as well. This has been the everyday ministry podcast, uh, and we hope you've enjoyed it. If you're encouraged by what you hear, please go like our Facebook page, share the episodes, and rate the podcast on iTunes. Don't forget that a new episode drops every first and third Mondays. Our prayer is that these episodes are an encouragement to you and that you would be faithful in the ministry that God has placed you in. Mm -hmm.